Hey there future nurses, it's Christine from Nurse in the Making and today we're gonna to talk about atrial fibrillation, also called a fib. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for weekly videos, daily nursing school questions, and all things to help you pass nursing school. Let's begin by breaking down the name atrial fibrillation. Atrial refers to the atria, or the top two chambers of the heart, and fibrillation is a term used to describe an inappropriate rhythm or a quivering. So AFib is an irregular rhythm, and you may find that the beats have no rhyme or reason, aka they are quivering. Let's look into why this happens. Let's start with the patho. AFib is the quivering or fibbing of the muscles in the atria. Remember, this is the upper chambers of the heart. This causes uncoordinated contractions between the atria and the ventricles. Basically, the bottom and the top chambers of the heart are not in sync because the electrical impulses are erratic and uncoordinated. The heart begins beating at an irregular rhythm with an erratic rate. So the ventricles are attempting to find some rhyme or reason to the atria's behavior, and they're just trying to keep up. AFib can be caused by many factors, but it's most commonly seen with a background of obesity, coronary artery disease, history of cardiac arrhythmias or an underlying structural problem with the heart, smoking, an increased alcohol or caffeine intake, and stress. And know that the onset of rapid AFib can be seen after surgery as well. This is because the body has been through anesthesia and the body is trying to adapt back. So in a post-operative setting, always be on the lookout for cardiac arrhythmias like AFib. Zooming out and looking at all these risk factors, they all have something in common. They all put strain on the heart, which can send it into a state of chaos causing irregular rhythms. Many patients with AFib are asymptomatic and may be unaware that their heart is even beating irregularly. Some might report feeling dizziness, nausea, and even a fluttering feeling in their chest or chest discomfort. It's very important that these are assessed right away. A major complication of AFib is that it causes blood clots. If you remember only one thing from this video, remember that AFib puts your patient at risk for blood clots. This is because the heart isn't beating correctly and blood is now allowed to pool in places where it shouldn't be pooling, leading to a clot. It increases the risk for pulmonary embolisms, PE, cerebral vascular accidents, CVA, also known as a stroke, deep vein thrombosis, DVT, and a myocardial infarction, also known as a heart attack. Let's talk about how to diagnose atrial fibrillation. The rhythm can be suspected by auscultating an apical pulse. An apical pulse is located at the left side of the chest at the fifth intercostal space midclavicular line, or just by palpating a radial pulse. If either of these feel irregular, you're gonna to wanna to confirm with an EKG. On an EKG rhythm strip, AFib will look just as erratic as it sounds. The classic telltale sign is irregular R to R intervals. The rate will most likely be high tachycardia, and you also may find that the heart rate bounces around, shooting in the high hundreds or even higher, and then dipping back into normal ranges right away. And there will be no P wave. Once an EKG has confirmed this rhythm, an echocardiogram may be performed. This is like an ultrasound for the heart. It's a more in-depth image of the heart and what it's doing. Once the rhythm is identified with these tests, treatment can begin. In acute situations, restoring a normal heart rhythm is the goal. Several medications will be used. Beta blockers are given to slow and control the rate of the heart. We're saved by the suffix as these drugs end in ololol. Common ones used for AFib are sodalol, carvedilol, and metoprolol. Another drug used is a drug called amiodarone. This is a strong antiarrhythmic which may be used in acute situations to change the rhythm of the heart. And a major point of treatment is based on the fact that this rhythm puts our patients at risk for blood clots. To combat this, we will begin anticoagulation therapy. 
We will start with short-term anticoagulants like heparin IV, which then will bridge or transition to a more long-term treatment like oral warfarin or Coumadin. This therapy may continue permanently if a patient lives in chronic AFib. If medications have not worked, something called a cardioversion will be performed, but this is not the same thing as defibrillation. For this procedure, the patient is converted back into the correct rhythm in a controlled way. A cardioversion delivers a synchronized plan shock. The patient is usually sedated and it's typically an outpatient procedure, meaning that they're going to go home the same day. You can remember this by the memory trick cardioversion think converted back to correct rhythm in a controlled way. Since this client is on anticoagulation therapy, such as heparin and warfarin, there is a lot of nursing considerations and patient teaching that will follow. I have an entire video on heparin and warfarin, so for more details, go ahead and watch that video. Since AFib puts the client at risk for clots, we want to monitor for signs and symptoms of blood clots. Tenderness, warmth, or redness to one calf can indicate a DVT. Shortness of breath, chest discomfort, trouble breathing, or a feeling of panic can indicate a PE. That's all for AFib. If you want more information about EKGs, you can find it in the Complete Nursing School Bundle. The link is in the description below. Happy studying, future nurses!